Manshuklal Optical and Company. So Manshuklal Optical and Company like was the temple and mecca of eyewear uh, uh, in the 19th, the early 19th century, 18th, 20th century. So, uh, Delhi, Calcutta, and Chennai uh, were the hubs to make uh, spectacle lenses, glass lenses. जो पहले बनते थे. What we now get more are plastic CR39 lenses. We were then doing good. So the optical business, our business family, history started from there. Then in uh, 1953, few late, Mr. Uh, Shri Darshan Lal Ji, Madan Madan Ji, what he shared in his last uh, interview, he shared a photo of uh, uh, PM Saiba, uh, Mrs. Indira Gandhi wearing the oh. spectacles, right? So the frame was manufactured by us. That was our frame from Vita Industries. Oh. oh wow! What? 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 in the late 90s so we had our oh, lab that was uh, afterwards uh, done away with and that premises was from where acidor india had started and from that's where they entered india okay. so we were also uh, in a, some way instrumental in bringing acidor to india so so it started from 1940 so actually it's a story about two brothers my great grandfathers <coughs> so okay. the i'll speak i'll stick to initials i'll just tell their names so the elder brother is himatlal maganlal turakya and the younger brother is was jagjivandas maganlal turakya so i'll stick to hmt and jmt so the story starts from uh, mansuklal optical and company so mansuklal optical and company like was the uh, temple and mecca of i wear uh, Uh, in the uh, 19th the early 19th century 18th 20th century so from that's where all the in all the wholesalers all the businesses that you see today have all started from learning from there so hmt my great grandfather was one of the employee there as a sales person with mansuklal optical company mansuklal optical company uh, was in bombay uh, delhi calcutta and chennai Uh, were the hubs to make uh, spectacle lenses, glass lenses, जो पहले बनते थे. What we now get more are plastic CR39 lenses. So glass lenses, labs and manufacturing, surfacing labs were more in those three cities: Delhi, Calcutta, and Chennai. Uh, the western and southern part was more known for uh, frame manufacturing: Gujarat, Bombay, etc. So from Bombay, then my Great grandfather HMT. He went to Chennai and he started in 1940. Uh, he started Turakya Optical Company there. So he was initially into making. Uh, he, we had a surfacing lab there, so we used to make glass lenses, <clears throat> and uh, it was doing good. And then then he called in uh, the younger brother Jagjivan Das G G M T, uh, and then so he was in Ahmedabad that time. He was a banker. The business was doing good. and then in 1953 he called him back uh, to chennai and uh, we were then doing good so the optical business our business family history started from there then in uh, 1953 if you late uh, 53 55 you can say uh, my grandfather so the elder son of hmt uh, they So once Jagjivan Das came into the business and uh, it was taking care of it nicely, then HMT moved back base to Bombay, and then his uh, sons, so like my grandfather and everybody, they started into frame manufacturing. So my side of the family has been into uh, more of the wholesale and manufacturing side for a long time. And the Chennai family, Jagjivan Das uh, JMT lineage, is always been in the retail side. so my grandfather uh, mht manalal himatlal turakya mht he started up uh, manufacturing first in a small way in uh, chembur and uh, jogeshwari and uh, then we moved to a bigger place uh, and we wanted to start manufacturing uh, in a big way so during 60s what happened is uh, we had our offices and we were exporting initially when we had the factory so my grandfather used to export heavily to the middle east uae africa and russia dayanand bandurkar uh, that time he was the first chief minister of goa 
so from his cabinet so mr george fernandes and uh, one more minister was there so they asked us why don't you start manufacturing in goa is goa is just liberalized and tax reforms are going to be much more relaxed so then we were like yes why not so that, that's how my grandfather came into goa and he set up a manufacturing unit here in early 60s 59 60 so he set it up in the name of vita industries then as the manufacturing picked up as we were exporting heavily uh, up till the 90s uh, the raw material had got very uh, expensive and and then we started a retail outlet in 1994 in madgaon that was our first retail store in goa in madgaon and uh, then we opened up a second store in 2008 So I did my bachelor's in optometry, clinical optometry, from 2004 to 2008 in Bharti Vidya Pit, Pune. 2003, we shut down uh, the manufacturing unit, and we are completely into retail. So uh, the one who's my uh, immediate uncle, my uh, father's younger brother, uh, they are having uh, three stores in Bombay. Then another uh, uncle has three stores in Bombay. Another has two in Bombay. uh the uncles who are in chennai there are there are two brothers so between the two brothers there are five to six stores so all of us are only into retail actually my story is a little bit of uh, interesting i never wanted to get into the family business i wanted to be an engineer so i wanted to get into automobile engineering or mechanical engineering so after my 12th Uh, in Mithibai College in Bombay, in, after doing my science, I had appeared for AI Triple E exam, which was like equivalent to a J Double E mains exam for engineering. So I did not score very highly, but uh, so I didn't get into engineering. But then, as it says, we all of us say that spectacles is in our blood, so this was inevitable. So optometry was the option left for me. Also, I had applied for AI PMT. so i did uh, fairly well in ai pmt compared to ai triple e which is surprising though i wanted to be an engineer so that's so i got into optometry in bharti vidya pit in pune i did my graduation there 3 years of theory there and uh, bharti vidya pit offers 9 months of uh, clinical internship so a friend of mine from uh, baroda and myself we applied for the first time as externs because to lv prasad i institute in hyderabad both of us uh, his name is huned huned and myself were uh, there in uh, lv prasad doing our internship there so we were the first interns from bharti vidya pit to do an internship at lv prasad and we were also the first externs for lv prasad because we did we were an ex we were external students from into their institute so after my internship got over then i went to chennai to my uncle there Uh, they have a huge store there uh, so uh, when they had started the store in mailapur it was uh, for at least about a decade or a decade and a half it was uh, asia's largest optical store of about 5000 square feet so i want i went to him to learn about administration and all those things so yeah he is also an optometrist from elite school of optometry uh, snehal turakya mr snehal turakya so that's where i went and then i i was back to goa So from 2008 November onwards I am back to Goa I have I've been in Goa and I've been taking care of business yes so all the three stores of ours are in a slightly different locations in Goa uh, the first store was uh, which is there is the it's in the heart of the city so around that there are a lot of optical stores the second store uh, also has a few optical stores in the vicinity but we enjoy a loyal customer base so the first and the second stores are just about 3 kilometers apart they both are in madgaon city but though they are just 3 kilometers apart uh, the demographics of customer base is quite different from each other and the third store where you are seeing me right now where i am currently uh, managing and where i am sitting right now uh, this store is just new it's been just one and a half year so this is in panjim in the capital of goa yes no Oh, I'm an expert. I'm not a vision setter, so I'm only having uh, a big uh, wall unit display of theirs, which you can see behind. So I don't have the measuring device. I have a virtual try-on of theirs. I think the other uh, 
aspect that one needs to look into independent practices is to learn to market themselves much efficiently uh, you can have some uh, leaflets brochures newspaper inserts uh, having a transactional value you know apart from just uh, having a brochure or a leaflet mentioning why a person should come to you or just listing your brands and your products and your skills and your services uh, having or adding a transactional value always uh, gets some walk into you you know uh, like an offer or a coupon or something <clears throat> or a gift voucher uh, online social media marketing is there facebook twitter instagram whatsapp uh, having a website also and the products also definitely helps uh, total combined stuff is about uh, seven to eight of us between three stores so i am an optometrist myself my wife is also an optometrist uh, we have an optometrist in our already yes my wife is a graduate from is a product of uh, lotus college of optometry in bombay and my father is still active in the business yes it's a love marriage so my father is still active in the business so he still sits actively at the first store that we had started and my wife takes care of the second store which i was there until now and the new store in the panjim uh, the panjim branch i take care of now season i am having a customer you left to excuse me just give me 2 minutes hi good morning no hi yes sachin so he has come to me a couple of times just to make normal service screw nikal gaya change the screws put the nose pads and then he has been coming with me for a year uh, he has taken a couple of times only the lens cleaners with me uh, i have sometimes i have charged sometimes he said no you please take and uh, he has made a pair of glasses now see so that's what i am saying so if you if your store ambiance is good your communication skills are good if you are presentable if you are well dressed okay then you don't have to worry about uh, customer the only thing is you have to be is be patient because that is what our industry actually demands very much so the point that i was making was that that why we why did we not scale my, my business my family why did we not scale blatantly and haphazardly you know so now he had been to an event he met one uh, uh, lens uh, representative from hoya okay so uh, safilo and hoya are having were having an event in this week uh, two days ago in goa so the customer is a friend of uh, somebody from safilo and because hoya people were there the moment he said uh, i know apurva and uh, you know so they recommend so Safil also told that you go straight away to him and he'll do the best. Don't worry. They also recommended me. Hoya recommended me. The customer knows me. See, so it so a lot of things come back to you in a very unexpected way. You know. So how is your rapport not just with your client? How is your rapport also with your sundry creditors, your vendors, your suppliers? That also matters a lot. A lot of lot of things matter. A lot of things matter. Small small things. Uh, how you treat your uh, sales rep who come you offer them some <clears throat> uh tea coffee you know some refreshments when they are coming even even if you offer a simple something as simple as a glass of water or a bottle of water they will be very happy you know so lot of things take you small things take you a long way ahead so this is what i had learned from my uncle in chennai mr snehal
see that's what we have always believed in a uh, lot of uh, opticians uh, forget their roots forget where they come from i'll not speak about like uh, age old businesses or legacy businesses much because legacy businesses know where they come from but a uh, lot of people feel that only by stocking high end brands not stocking lower brands uh, will make things work <clears throat> all our stores believe me whether it's in chennai or bombay all our stores have frames bare minimum starting at least from 800 900 rupees and then which go up till five figures and six figures okay in goa because the market is such i have frames from as little as 500 and 600 rupees okay we have lenses which are starting from as little as 400 and 5 500 rupees so it depends it is not always that only if you sell high ticket you are going to get your roi in in time and in you are going to be sustaining your uh, finances and expenditures at least start at least do somewhere seal the deal close the deal close the sale then you should not see how much value or how much pricing you are able to push see that is why this is one of our other usps of our group i would say as a family of the turakya family as a group is we do not push sell see don't get scared of competition competition is inevitable and competition is required for growth okay uh, as i will again say 82 years we have seen all the ups and downs all the cycles that are trade that our industry has foreseen in the last 82 years right lot of changes lot of uh, things happening uh, so we have evolved from that time and competition has always been there it's always increased it will always come and go so don't get worried about competition do what sets you apart increase your knowledge update your skills this i would more specifically say to uh, optometrists who are there okay a uh, lot of optometrists get into private independent practice thinking that they'll try and provide the best eye care and patient care to the clients but in india the mindset is very different it is unlike uh, us europe australia or i would even say singapore and japan uh, it's people having a lot of experience and technical sound knowledge also at the end of the day in india the customer is going to be more focused about where they are getting the best price along with a decent value or features in a product okay so you keep up with that and uh, don't get disheartened by the chain stores that open around you okay uh, just do what you have to do keep your blinders on like a horse focus what you are supposed to do okay don't have the time to move your head around and see who's doing what improvise what you have to do second thing is so like when we were into the manufacturing side uh mr uh, shri darshan lal ji madan madan ji what he shared in his last uh, interview he shared a photo of uh, uh pm saiba uh, mrs indira gandhi wearing the oh. spectacles right so the frame was manufactured by us that was our frame from vita industries oh, oh wow kya so, kya kya naam hai wo naam kya tha vita v i t a Vita. So we used to exhibit in Mido very often for the in the late 90s. So we had our stock was exhibited in Mido as well. So we were heavily into export. Then the Chennai side of the family was there. So GMT was there, right? As I spoke, Jagjivan Das Baba Ji, uh, Jagjivan Das Ji, Man Turakya. So his son, uh, Rajni Turakya. You must have definitely heard his name at least, Rajni Kant Turakya, Rajni Turakya from Chennai. so he was very much instrumental and in bringing uh, doing the jo- uh, joint venture and tie up with esilor uh, and getting esilor to india so the surfacing lab that we had in chennai right the glass mm. of lab that was uh, afterwards uh, done away with and that premises was from where esilor india had started and from that's where they entered india okay. so we were also uh, in a, some way instrumental in bringing esilo to india so so it's so all these things have a legacy if you want the legacy to move on the it takes time that's my whole criteria is this only you know to give time uh, your succeeding generation will not join 
your business it's not just my in business or our industry i'm talking about any any other sector they will not join until unless they don't imbibe those similar ethos and values that have been passed down by the previous generations and there is a reason for that so that is one thing uh, don't get bogged down just keep going that's all be patient correct correct patient. okay okay fine fine okay thank you bye thank you. welcome bye